It's intern season. If you're doing an internship, you're probably really excited to just rack up all that tech money and flex on all your friends, but you might also be anxious about doing well. If only there was just one thing that you could do to make sure you get a return offer. If only it could be summarized in like two words. Lucky for you, that is very much the case here. If there's only one soft skill that you can get right during your internship, it really should be this manage expectations. So already I wanna clarify, I do not mean lower expectations, I do not mean slack off. You should try to write the highest quality code that you can, but that's usually not the biggest concern for a lot of interns. Cause you can't really measure someone's success by lines of code. There's usually no objective benchmark for intern success. It's gonna come down to a subjective evaluation, usually in the form of a written assessment from your manager, another mentor, and other people that you work with. And at the end of the day, the final decisions are gonna be made Made by people and programmers, but they're basically close enough. And like most other human decisions, if they like you and they want to hire you, they're going to hire you. So really, if you can understand people's expectations and manage them so they're contained in a place that's reasonable, and then do things that clearly hit above them throughout your entire internship, what else do you really need to do? So today I wanna to break down a few tips for actually doing this, because we need some tips. Everybody loves tips. You're not a YouTuber if you don't give tips. My first tip is low hanging fruit. It should be pretty obvious, and that's to hit the subscribe button. You gotta let your coworkers know that you're cool and that you have good taste and also that you're growing and trying to improve yourself as a person so that they can expect you'll probably do that in a full-time role and they'll give you a return offer. So my next tip is also low-hanging fruit. It should be pretty straightforward and that is to communicate proactively. Get in the groove of checking in with your manager and other people relevant to your project at least once a week but maybe even every single day. Just make it really casual. Just drop by their desk or shoot them a message. Give them updates on what you're working on, ask for genuine feedback, mention anything that you're struggling with or not sure about, and then hit them with the secret weapon. All right, this is important. Without them asking, say something that you're going to do and then actually do it. <laughs> There's generally this assumption that people naturally avoid accountability, people don't make promises, and people don't keep them. But it's really not that hard to do if you just pick something that you were already expected to do anyway, something that's pretty reasonable. Just try hitting someone with this. Hey, I just wanted to follow up on this thing that we mentioned yesterday. I'm working on it right now. I'll send it to you within the hour. And then go actually do that. Holy moly, you will look like a professional. And what this does is it builds this trust that you are proactive about getting things done. And once you establish this expectation, people are gonna be really chill with you and pretty hands off throughout the rest of your internship. You'll have a great time and it'll make it so much easier to follow these next few tips. So my next tip is to write a roadmap. This is gonna be your timeline and your journal for for your internship projects. One huge trait of the tech industry is that it's nearly impossible for people to accurately estimate how long a software project is going to take. So instead of letting people come up with their own expectations for your timeline, just write out your own timeline early in your internship and then sell it. Get your manager and your teammates on board with it and agreeing to it. You really shouldn't worry about how you're doing because you should already know at every step of the way. Don't wait until your midpoint and final reviews. Just give people every opportunity possible to give you feedback like right away. If you have a roadmap written out and you keep it updated constantly and you ask people to comment on it, you're good to go. On your roadmap, make sure you include your goals and any progress you've made towards them as well as any roadblocks that come up along the way. Also include links to any tech specs or design docs that you write, any resources that you find helpful, any documentation as well as contact information for people that help you along the way. If you just build this narrative that's detailed and constantly updated and you share it with people, everyone's expectations are gonna be in the same place and it'll be easier to manage them. So my next tip sounds pretty edgy, but I promise it's really important, especially for interns. Stop apologizing. Yes, you are going to make mistakes. You're gonna not know things, you're going to mess up. That's part of the process. You have to take ownership of them and let people know that you're working on improving. However, this doesn't mean you need to just say sorry all the time. I know imposter syndrome is really common with interns, but let's think about what sorry actually means. When you say sorry, you're basically asking someone to say it's okay or no worries. It's basically a request for mercy. And it really doesn't put either of you in a good position. You're just reinforcing 
reinforcing this idea that you fell short of expectations and you really don't need to do that. There really should be this expectation that it's a learning process and that you're going to have a lot of struggles along the way. And all professional engineers know that. So please just don't get in your own way by just being super apologetic all of the time. And my last piece of advice for you is to find your focus. In high school and college, it's kind of the cool thing to just go really deep into every single thing that's thrown your way, but people really only care about the one best thing that you do. So when you're exploring your project and you're figuring out what your team and other people are working on, try to find one area that will make the most impact and just narrow on that thing. Interns usually get thrown a bunch of unrelated tasks and random assignments, and this is just a safeguard to make sure that all interns at least get something to do. If you can find a feature you can add or an improvement you can make that positively moves the overall metrics of the company, just beeline straight for that and start cutting other things out. If you've managed expectations and communicate properly with people, they're usually gonna be pretty okay with this. This is going to take a lot of time and a lot of thought, but you'll actually stop yourself from losing productivity to content switching between a bunch of random tasks. This is also going to protect you from what is called scope creep. Let's say your project is to build a dating app. You got to be firm right off the bat that this app is only going to handle one-on-one -on -one matchups because halfway through everyone around you is going to start saying, oh, you might as well start matching up groups. You might as well suggest activities. You might as well add fun little games here and there, a bunch of new features, new use cases, new things to consider. You're gonna have a lot of new expectations just thrown at you all the time. You're leaving yourself room to fall short of them. And it's okay to just respectfully push back a little bit. Explain to people how adding a lot of extras doesn't really add value to the initial goal. And it's going to be a more effective use of your time to focus on one thing. If you've managed expectations and communicate properly with people, People, they're usually gonna be pretty okay with this. So overall, managing expectations is probably the most important skill you can have as an intern, but also in other areas of life, whether you're establishing relationships with people or you're setting your own expectations to kind of calibrate your own happiness. Like most skills, there is a lot of subtlety, nuance, and tactfulness that needs to go into it. But if you break it down into very straightforward tips, methods, and actions that you can start doing right now, and you just do them consistently over time, you'll work your way towards mastery and you're gonna be good to go. So hopefully this video was really helpful for you. If so, make sure you hit the subscribe button down below hit the like button because it really helps me out and then tap the notification bell so that you get a notification whenever i post a new video thank you so much for watching and i'll see you around next time